what is already happening, and there's a lot already happening in the United States, but also to look forward and think about what goals should we put, put forward for the future, uh, and how do we get there. Um, I should introduce myself, I'm Barb Bryant, I'm a member of the New England Orienteering Club, Cambridge Sports Union, and Navigation Games. I am also on the board of OUSA, and I am um, quite recently um, named to be the vice president of youth initiatives. So that's the perspective from which I'm speaking today. So in, in looking forward, I have in really big letters on this slide the word goals, because something I am hoping for us to coalesce around in the next few months is what do we really want to accomplish? What does OUSA want to create around youth? Uh, the board is very strongly in favor of growing orienteering, increasing the number of people in the United States who orienteer, and we also believe that doing that through youth programs is a really good approach. But what exactly does that mean? Like, what is our ultimate goal? Uh, can we can we come up with numerical uh, goals for ourselves, and then? sort of, the, which would be more like an outcome goal, what do we want to see, how many kids are orienteering by when, but also how do we get there, and that's more the process goals. Um, I learned about outcome goals and process goals, by the way, from Aaron Schur, our orienteering uh, youth coach, so I'm, I'm imitating him. Uh, and then how are we going to measure that, because having goals is great, but how are we going to measure our progress towards that, and what is our plan for getting there, and who's going to do it? So all of those things are things are that I'm hoping will work out. Um, as we uh, hear about what's already happening today and think about what we could do, I wanted to keep in mind some of the questions and ideas that I have. So first of all, when I talk to people about what they want, they have different ideas about what our goals should be. Um, I usually find that there is some commonality, but there are often some differences, and I think it's important to take stock of that and acknowledge it. So for example, um, uh, Maybe there are even maybe there are people who think we don't need to grow. They're just happy with how their clubs are working right now, and it's fine. So there's growth versus is that really important? Um, there are some people who feel that outreach to youth might not be so valuable because you can do all these things for kids, but then they never come to events. So it's important yeah. to be aware that we might not all be in agreement and to and to talk about what we really do uh, see as our goals and, and and see where we do agree or where we can support the, each other's goals even if we're, that's not our own primary yes. goal. Um, I think it's really important to support the existing efforts, identify things that work and build on them, but there are a lot of different things that are currently in place and are currently working. Are we gonna you know, pursue them all? I think that might be worth it, but can we um, provide some kind of consistent framework for that so that um, there's more synergy? So I'm not sure how to think about that yet. Uh, there's a lot of places to start. We're gonna hear about those um, today. Uh, we need people to take this on. So we can talk all we want about what we wanna see happen, but if there isn't a champion, if there isn't a person who's taking it on, it's not gonna happen. Uh, we, don't, we need not only leaders and champions, but also the people who are gonna say, I'm gonna help you with that. Uh, you can't have a single person doing it all on their own. Uh, and then we need people who are just talking it up, you know, maybe they're not doing a lot of the work, but every time they have an interaction with another human being, they're looking for an opening to talk about orienteering and what's happening. And, and that awareness raising makes a big difference. Uh, I think we need to explore collaborating with other organizations, other uh, sports organizations, other youth organizations, uh, umbrella organizations, the Olympic Committee in the United States, uh, in the International Orienteering Federation, and we need, need to think about funding because all of these efforts are gonna cost. Great. Um, so I wanted to do a little exercise. I thought maybe I would do some research ahead of time and come up with estimates for how many kids are currently orienteering, but I don't have those numbers. So I just wanna do a little group exercise um, and let's like go through these different categories and make a guess about how many kids are involved in each one. So how many kids do you think are currently showing up in the national rankings list uh, for having orienteered? 
I mean, I looked at it recently. 10, 20, 100? No. 50. Oh, wow. 50? No. 30. 30. Yeah. Yeah, we're talking white, yellow, orange, green, red, blue. So hmm. uh, I hear from 10 to. So are you buying kids with four rankings or just the one no. on the rankings? No, anyone who's been at a meet oh. is oh. 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 on the list. Maybe 100. 100, yeah. That's okay. probably. A couple so, hundred. I mean, how many go to the IS every year? Hundred to two hundred. By going to the IS, they're on the list. I think that would be your same membership ranking. Yeah. Well, technically, but they're on the ranking anyway because no one's tracking that. We have no way of tracking it. Nice. Without Wait, it. let's let's talk about JROTC. How many JROTC kids orienteer? Different 2000. kids. Two thousand. At at the are you talking about at nationally all. ranked or just complete? at all? In the U.S., a couple sounds, thousand. Yeah, thousands. Thousands, yeah, a couple thousand. Okay. I'd say 800. Uh, okay. And how many kids? Uh, how many kids competed in last year's interscholastics and intercollegiate championships? Two hundred. I know that's a subset. Well, between two hundred and two hundred. One hundred and fifty to two hundred. Yeah. That's okay. Scouts. How many scouts are in tier? Ten thousand. Like how many? Have yeah, done? that's, I mean, that's I mean, well. well. <laughs> how many scouts have ever orienteered, or how many scouts or in, in any given year? How many scouts? Or annually, how many scouts? Uh, or the orienteering course, so almost yeah. everyone mm -hmm. did something. But great. So let's ask how many children in the United States who are scouts have ever orienteered? Yes. How many scouts are there in the United States? Girls, boys? Ten million. Plus? Well, mm. the, only the Boy Scouts have a requirement for it. Uh -huh. Right, girls, yeah, mo most Girl Scouts, the answer is they have it. A couple million Boy Scouts in the country? Yeah, I think something. Maybe 10% of them have orienteered. Boy Scouts. Okay. And, we are, and are we including things like American Heritage Girls and Member, Frontier Scouts? Yeah, and membership all the of Scouts Boy Scouts is 2,700,000. 2, Okay, so I think we could potentially say that between 10,000 and a million scouts <laughs> <laughs> have orienteered, okay. which is potentially quite a large number. Um, local club events, so a few thousand kids. A thousand. A thousand. Um, and then in schools, our school programs. So I went to a, Massachusetts, a, a, a convention for Massachusetts PE educators uh, earlier this week and talked to two teachers who told me, volunteered the information that they teach orienteering in their classes, but NEAC doesn't know about them, you know. So I, all I'm saying is there might be some teachers who are teaching orienteering that we don't know about. How many kids might get it through that guy? I think in Virginia we have two or three schools that they get for uh, orienteering problem. Yeah. Yeah, I ran into a problem. teacher in, the, in South Dakota that was teaching orienteering. Okay, so, so it's, uh, it's thousands more. Thousands, it's thousands, thousands more. I don't know. Teacher did it. it was really or or only one that has a, um, a school or anything. There's another one. Yeah. But there's a lot of kids in every school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool, cool. Fork Union has a school or interior program. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, great. So, so I think what we're seeing is. There are, there are a lot of ways in which kids get introduced into orienteering in the USA, and potentially there are quite a few kids who get introduced into orienteering in the USA. It might be nice, I mean orienteering, it might be nice to try and quantitate that and then make a goal around expanding that number and seeing if we can get to it. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, we started a survey on youth yeah. programs in the United States. Um, so I have here a link to the survey. It's just a Google form, and then these, this is how we're currently presenting the results. This is not live, but you can go to the live thing. I wonder if I dare do that. Um, and uh, basically, you can look pers you can uh, kind of look at each program by state, by type of program, um, and and just check it out. And so I'm hoping that over time, this might grow into. Uh, a resource so that if you're interested in building a program, you could see what other people have done and um, maybe contact them, get some information. Uh, we do collect information about are you willing to share, what materials might you have. Uh, so maybe this is like a starting point for building up a database of what youth orienteering is happening in the United States. Um, some of the, this is just, uh, we, we've gotten 34 responses so far, most of which are from the United States. I put in some information about Canada. Um, anybody can put in anything, so 
Uh, and then we're looking at different types of programs, school programs, scouts, JROTC, and so on. Uh, this is kind of interesting. These are the ages that are targeted by these programs, and it, it's this nice progression where more and more um, kids and older ages are targeted by these programs, which is kind of interesting. I personally am really interested in starting earlier. You think it's all the way around. Well. Kids, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's just interesting to see wait, what we Wait, 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 just a minute. So this is uh, where we are uh, emphasizing uh, who's a survey of whom? Yeah, so this is a survey uh, of any orienteering program in the United States. So there's some JROTC in there, Scouts, okay. anything uh, wilds in there. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So it, is this where it's it, it's delivered or whether you're targeting because there's a big difference yeah uh, I'm not I think the um, language of the survey was targeted okay okay thanks so uh, just to finish up my introduction what we're going to do today is we're going to hear about a lot of different kinds of programs we're going to hear about activities that are available at club meets we're going to hear about uh, an OUSA program for uh, getting patches for different levels of skill. We're going to hear about JROTC, Scouts, um, PE classes, and so on. So I think it's important to really look at what works really well from what we have and what people we have and what ideas we have and get a really good feeling for what exists and then think about where we want to go. Um, so this is a little bit outdated, but you have the uh, paper listing what we're going to do. So our next speaker is Greg Oswede, and he'll talk about the Junior National Program. Uh, Barb, I, I have a quick question. Let's talk. Um, uh, what is sort of a, what do you think is a feasible goal for OUSA in the next three to five years? Uh, well. I had been thinking about um, proposing a goal of increasing the number of kids orienteering tenfold in the next three years, but that was before we had our little count and realized that there are already millions of kids orienteering. <laughs> so uh, I, I think I, I might, um, I, so I don't know, I think it, I, I still like the idea of increasing manyfold the number of orienteers that OUSA is working with, the number of youth orienteers that OUSA and member clubs are working with. Um, but we'll talk more about that, I think, over the next few sessions. Great. Thanks, Barb. Yep.